All right, we want to study some this morning on the book of Psalms. We'll turn your Bibles to Psalms, the 20, 20th chapter, 21st chapter, 20, 20. We'll look and see for sure. Yeah. Let's read chapter 20. Uh, there's uh, seven verses here in uh, chapter 20 in the Psalms, the book, the book of Psalms. I'm getting my tongue untwisted here in a minute. And we'll go on about it. All right. In my distress, David's saying here to, uh, as he cried out, he was, we, if you study Psalms, read Psalms, any, you know that this was one of the things that David was always distressed about problems. Uh, uh, the Lord had made him a great king, and uh, but still, all in all, he had problems. He had family problems. He had woman problems. He had every kind of problem that could uh, uh, hinder a, a fleshly man. But he's he's always saying in his in his condition. So here he says it's a uh, a prayer of deliverance is what he's asking for, uh, and uh, it says in my Bible here from lying lips. And of course, David realized this morning, and we ought to realize also that we are in this flesh, and this flesh is uh, is uncertain, it's sinful, and he says here it was from lying lips. But anyway, uh, in the Bible it reads, "In my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and He heard me." And you know that's a wonderful statement this morning that we uh, really and truly like to make because sometimes we cry out to the Lord and uh, we wonder, well, uh, did he hear? Well, listen, I, I, can, I can say this, I believe, and, uh, and believe it, that the Lord always hears because Jesus Christ hears our prayer and he takes it to the Father and the Father will hear it from him. And so here he's saying this morning, that he was in this, this distressed condition and he cried unto the Lord and he heard me. He knew he heard him. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from the, a deceitful tongue. Now, we this morning as, as, as saved people understand what he is asking for because we were in that condition. Right. We were in a, a, a condition of lying lips and a deceitful tongue. And listen, we still got it mm -hmm. because we've got the flesh to deal with. And there is no good in this flesh. And so many people get turned around with this and they don't understand. And they say, well, I have did this and I've done that. And I haven't sinned in years and years and years. But they're, they're deceived in even when they're saying this. And so here he's saying here in verse 3, What shall be given unto thee? Oh, what shall be done unto thee, thou false tongue? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper. And I see uh, in this this morning the mighty... Warrior is a mighty warrior. Sharp arrows of the mighty warriors, and this juniper juniper tree that he's talking about is a, according to the way I understand, it's a broom tree. And I don't know what what it was used for or how it was, uh, but that's what he called it, a, a, a juniper. And so that's maybe you can study that and find out a little bit more about it. But in, in verse five he says, "Woe is me." that I sojourned in Meset, that I dwelt in the tents of Kedar. My soul hath long dwelt with him that hateth peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. And so here we see he, David's condition in, he, in his twofold manner here. He is, he is for peace, but his flesh is for war. And he was a warrior. He was a warrior from the time he was a young, young boy. Because uh, even in even in his young days, he killed a lion, I believe it was, or a bear, and uh, 
and then he went on and killed Goliath. And so he was a warrior from the word go, and yes, this is what he's saying here uh, in, in this, my soul has long dwelt with him that hateth peace. I am for peace spiritually, but when I speak, they are for war. And so this morning, we, we need to, to get, I'm reading this to get the picture of the flesh and what the how the, it differs from the spirit. But notice, now we're going to go to chapter 21. When I lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord, Amen. which made heaven and earth. Now notice, uh, uh, he clarifies this thing of where his, where his peace come from. And he says, I will lift, lift up mine eyes unto the hills and from whence my help cometh, or my, whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, Amen. which made heaven and earth. And so this morning when we, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people think that um, uh, they can worship statues, and they can worship trees, and they can worship mountains, and they can worship houses, and all these things. And uh, this is, is this is all right in the eyes of the Lord. Well, listen, it's not all right in the eyes of the Lord for you to worship anything except Him through Jesus Christ and through the Holy Spirit. That's the way that we're to worship the Lord. And this morning. We certainly need not leave the, the Holy Spirit out because, listen, that's where the God, through Jesus, sends a message to our souls through the Holy Spirit. He speaks to our hearts, and He comforts our hearts, and, and He is the comforter, as Jesus called Him when He said, I will send you a comforter, and that is the Holy Spirit. And so this morning, if you're to get comforted, in any of your life's problems, of any of your health problems, or of any problem that you have, it's going to come through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because He is the Comforter. Amen. And this morning, we don't need to be ashamed to say that we believe in the Holy Spirit. We don't need. Amen. To, we don't need to be ashamed to raise our hands and, and say Hallelujah Amen. to the Father. Because listen, that's that is uh, in Hebrews, I believe, it is seven. Or that's. That is the uh, praise of the Lord, hallelujah, and, and hallelujah, and that's Amen. what they used back in the Old Testament, is hallelujah, and so this morning, we need to use that, so notice here in uh, uh, 21, he says, uh, verse 3, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved, he that keepeth thee will not slumber, behold, he that keepeth Israel shall never slumber nor sleep. Now, Amen. this is one of the things that you can depend upon with the Lord. He don't sleep. He don't slumber. He, he's always aware of what's going on in your life and my life. He's always aware of what you need. And listen, he takes care of those that he loves. Amen. And it may be that you, you, you get doubting about him, but don't do it. Because listen, there is a time, according to Ecclesiastes, for all things. And what you need may not be now. What you need may be out in the future. Or what you think you need, you may never need it. But listen, the Lord knows what you need. The Lord knows what you're asking. The Lord knows everything about you. So don't give up on the Lord a second because he is, he is always sitting right there on the throne and Jesus Christ is sitting right beside of him according to God's word and he is making intercessions for us through uh, the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit and so this morning these are some of the things that you need to remember about the Lord Jesus Christ because he says here behold uh, he will never he will not suffer thy foot to be moved and I'll, over, over in the scriptures here we're going to look at just a minute about uh, David saying that his foot had almost slipped. Mm -hmm. And listen, we get so close sometimes uh, to that, and we sometimes the devil will put it in our in our mind that our uh, that we've already slipped, that we've already he'll he'll put it in your mind that you can fall from grace. He'll put it in your mind that that God don't love you. He'll put it in your mind any ungodly thing that he can think of, and he's strong and he knows what he's saying or doing. And so listen this morning, be be careful. Mm -hmm. And just just rely on the Lord and you can yeah. you can you can 
drop right back like in a rocking chair and rest on his word because listen it's true amen and this is what he's telling us no so now uh <clears throat> he said here in, in uh, 21 5 the lord is my keeper the lord is my shade upon thy right hand and i'm assuming what he's saying by being shade shade will protect you from the heat Amen. And I'm, I'm sure he says it's on the right hand and so this morning he is always a protector for you and in the uh, heat of the battle or in the whatever you're in he's 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 your shade he's your protector and it's with your right hand or He's, he's, he's saying the right hand because it's better than the left hand. And so he said here, verse 6, The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. And listen, people, that don't mean that don't mean half of the evil that's coming out of the world. This morning, in, in this, this worldly condition that we're in, evil is is on the up up brain upswing and right. listen, evil is out there but here i want you to understand this morning what it says and you may you may you may get spit on you may get cussed you may do this you may do that but listen remember this here he says the lord shall preserve thee from all evil he shall preserve thy soul the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in Amen. from this time forth and even forevermore. And so when we get down in the dumps and when we get to thinking that we're being mistreated, well, we probably may be. But the thing of it is, you always remember this, that God knows every little sour word that's been put to you. He knows every little temptation that the devil is trying to tempt you with. He knows every evil thing that's going on that's trying to distract you from serving him. He knows it. And he says here, he says he will preserve us, he will protect us, and he will, will be with our coming in and going out. And so when you say coming in and going out, that means all the time. Amen. So here, here again, he says uh, in, in uh, so 122 now, and I was glad, and here is, here is what I was studying, but I wanted to read this and, and kind of bring it in to you. But, but here he says, and I thought to myself as I was studying this and reading this and, 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 and uh, hallelujah about it, uh, it's such a good thing this morning that I can go to church. Mm -hmm. It's such a good thing this morning that I know the Lord. Amen. It's just a good thing this morning that I can bow my head to God and praise His holy name. It's a good thing. And listen, it's a wonderful thing because we know this morning that we're secure because the Holy Spirit comes in and comforts our hearts. Amen. And so we are secure, we're comforted. And listen, He says here, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. And what a wonderful thing it is this morning that we can we can come here and that we can fellowship, we can sing songs of praise to the Lord, we can honor Him and, and say glory to God, we can say hallelujah to the Lord, we can just we can just leave this old flesh over to one side and let this spirit rave on. Amen. And praise the Lord. And so this morning he says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgments and thrones of the house of David. Notice, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. They shall prosper that love thee. And this morning, this is one thing that we really and truly, and we don't think about this much, but we do need to pray for the, the state of Israel. Because what does he say here? God loves Israel, uh, and he's the apple of his eye. And listen to me, he says here, uh, here he says, uh, uh, here in, uh, pray in verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem 
they shall prosper that love thee. And so this morning, when you pray for someone, you pray because you love them and you want God's blessings on them. And we need to pray for the state of Israel, and we need to pray for the state of the United States this morning that the Lord might uh, deal with them and bring them back into peace and that we could live more comfortably at, than we do. And so, but Israel, Israel has got a terrible situation to go through, people. They're going to go through some times that they haven't never went through. So we need to pray for them. We need to pray for our country and for, for, for the things that the devil is trying to control, which he is this morning, and pray for them that uh, the Lord will take this, this away from him and not let him do it. So here again in verse 7, Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and my companions say, I will not uh, say peace be within because of the house of the Lord our God. I Amen. will seek thy good. And so here again we see that we want to we want to get back in this now just a little bit, and we want to uh, when we want to turn to page number seven. I mean the chapter seventy three, and read just a little bit more that we found about this uh, 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 one point three. So one seventy three. I mean seventy three. I'm sorry. Seventy three. We'll, we'll get to you in a minute. Okay. Seventy three. Now notice. <clears throat> Let me find it here for me. Okay, and we'll let's go over verse 1. It's 73, verse 1. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. Amen. But, David's saying here, but as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slid, or slid, slipped. And here is a condition this morning, and I spoke of it a while ago. This is this is a condition sometimes that a Christian gets into, mm -hmm. and he gets to doubting. He gets to doubting. What am I doing wrong? Uh, what can I do? What can I say? What? Can, but listen, when we get to that condition, we don't need to ponder on the thought of what can I do, because then you involve works. Mm -hmm. And listen, there's no work uh, that is as good as going to the Lord in prayer and just keep on praying to him because, listen, you know that prayer is getting to him if you're saved because he has Jesus sitting to the side of him and he has the Holy Spirit uh, to help a uh, uh, comfort. And so you know that that's getting there and, and sometimes you pray and you pray and you pray and it, it just don't seem like it gets there. But then, you know, in the least little thing, something, God appears, God sends a comforter in a great way and you feel that blessing come in you and you feel that comfort come in you and you know, you know for a fact that it's coming from the Lord. Yeah. And so this morning, don't don't give up and don't don't get to the point where David was at because he says here that he his, his uh, he'd almost he, he his feet were almost gone and my steps had well nigh slipped for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. When he saw these people, and of course he had all of these problems with his son and with the uh, other kings and with things like this. And here he, he says here, I looked at those ungodly evil people. And this is in a condition when my foot had already about slipped and gone. And he's seen this condition of these people that were ungodly people, then they were, they were prosperous. They were making money or whatever. There was a uh, whatever that you want to look at and say they were doing that was pleasing to the flesh. He saw it. And listen what he says here. He says, he says, I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Mm -hmm. For there are no bands in their death 
but their strength is firm. And so the bands that he's talking about are the, the bands that hold them back from doing all this. He says there's no bands there. They haven't got anything to hold their hands from keep doing this. They had from their mouth from saying these things, their tongue from using this. He said they're free to do whatever they want to and listen to everything's coming into them. That's a condition this morning that the devil gives to his saints when he needs to attract this, the, the attention of God's saints. Mm -hmm. And listen, that's, what, that's how he does it. And so you know this morning and I know this morning that, that hell is the home of all those that are not saved. Right. But listen, God has saved you. God has, 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 has made you his. And you do not need to pay any attention to what other people do and if you un you understand anything about fruit at all you know these old people out here that are are, are, are ones like baby was talking about here they're bearing fruit but it's ungodly fruit right their works their works are ungodly and you when you see that and and you get excited because they're they're getting worldly gains listen you're being deceived if they get them, let them have them, because that's their that's their glory while they're here on this earth. That's their joy while they're on earth, because one day they're going to leap uh, like a fire. Right. But listen, you should not have no desire for worldly things that these ungodly people are getting, because listen, it's it stinks. It's ungodly, mm -hmm. and it will lead them to a devil's hell. And so this morning, uh, I know the world looks pretty. And the world uh, is pitching out that money and everything like that. And, and some of them are picking it up like a chicken picking up corn and, mm -hmm. and putting it in bags and, and, and running around and showing it. But listen, that's now. That's their earthly, that's their earthly pleasure. But they won't have that earthly pleasure. They won't even have any pleasure when they get to their destiny. And Amen. so this is, what, this is what David is talking about here this morning. He says about their bands, for there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. And so you can see, you can see people uh, all through, the, all through the, the world, and they don't look like there's anything ever happens to them. Everything just falls right into their hands. They got everything that the world offers, but listen, that's their payday. That's their joy, because it won't happen when after death, and so they'll pay. They they're going to pay that penalty uh, when they die. So here he says this in uh, uh, they are uh, verse five. We have read five. No five. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like them. Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. Mm -hmm. Now there's a chain. He said it was unbound and. Their eyes stand out like fatness, and they have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lofty. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. And so you can tell the condition of them, and I believe this morning uh, about their mouth here is that they, they're they using cuss words. I think they're using foul language. I think that they don't have no problem whatsoever in cussing a person out, uh, telling him how so-so he is, and that is their fruit. And listen, when you see someone standing and cussing someone or calling them a so-and-so or this or that, listen, you know that fruit that they're bearing is sour. Mm -hmm. And you know you can judge a person by the fruit that he bears. Uh, and listen, you know their condition. But listen, your problem is that you need to, and you, it's not a problem to you, but you, you want to, uh, for all means, pray for that person, mm -hmm. and, and 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 you know that's it. That's the only hope they've got, Amen. because they're sold out to the devil, and he's their god. But you and I can pray for that person, and ask God that He might turn that person, He might save that person, might show that person their their evil deeds, 
and and strengthen man that they might come to be a child of God. Amen. And that's that's that really it boils it down to what our thing is this morning. We are to pray for one another, and we are to pray for those that are lost out there. Those that uh, and like they treated Jesus, they spit on him, they pulled his beard, they beat him. But listen, he didn't he didn't say a word to them about that. But uh, I'm sure that he was, he was sick at heart, and he prayed for them. I, I'm sure this morning. So this morning here, uh, I want to get on just a little bit further. Uh, in verse 9, they set their mouths against the heaven, their tongues walked through the earth, therefore his, his people return hither, and water, waters of a full cup are wrung out of them. And they say, how doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? And these are some of the questions this morning even that that people would ask you about who is God, where did he come from, how does he know these things, is he, is he, is he a spirit, is he this or is he that, but listen, and they say, how does God know, is, and is there knowledge in the midst most high, behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world, they increase in riches, very I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of, my, of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Amen. Then understood I their ends. And I'm sure this morning, when he went into the sanctuary, he heard the priest or the preachers telling about things that, that God had revealed to him and, and, and what their end was here because he says, surely, in verse 18, surely thou didst set them in slippery places, thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terror. Amen. So these are the ones that, that David was looking at, and he had envy against them because they had prospering and all of this. But listen, when he got to where that he could hear God's word, when he got to the word place where that God was speaking to him, he understood. When he went in, he understood that. And so if we can understand this morning the the things that are going on in this world, the killings and the the the, the killing of babies, the killing of, of uh, old people, uh, and all of this, all of this stuff that's going on. Listen, if we will just think a little bit, we'll see their end. We'll know we'll know where their end will be, uh, unless unless we start praying for them, and then unless we start to. Uh, Encouraging other people to pray for him because that's the only thing that will help them. And, and, uh, and I want to read just a little bit more and I'm, I'm through. <clears throat> In verse 20, as a dream when one awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakenest, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant. I was at as a beast before thee. Now he's seeing when he envied over here what kind of condition he was in, and he's 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 asking God to forgive him for this. And that's no notice here. He says, "I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand." Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? Amen. And there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is, is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from me shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. 
but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, and I may declare all my, thy works. And so this was the end result of David when he realized that he had, he had almost slipped. He'd almost slipped. But then he, he, was, he, was, he was upset, and he was mad because of those people and what they, the, the fruits and how they were, how they were gaining. But then, and, 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 and this is the thing this morning, when I entered into the temple, mm -hmm. I understood. And listen, this morning, we need, we need God's word. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is the only medicine that will heal an angry heart. It's the only thing that will, that will help us to see the Lord and see what we have and that we, when we get mad, we're letting the devil get in control of us. Right. And so this morning, uh, been a lot of reading, but I hope that it'll stir some things in, in, in us to let us understand in this, in this condition, in this time that we're in, uh, we don't need to uh, get upset uh, mm -hmm. about these things. We don't need to ask God to kill half of them because listen, he kills who he wants to, mm -hmm. and that's a, that's a foolish prayer uh, this morning to me. But I know I know in the Old Testament uh, it was asked for God to take them and all this. But listen, now it's grace, and uh, He'll take care of the job. All we need to do is just take care of ourselves and pray to Him and ask Him for forgiveness for our sins, because we have, if we do that, we have a full time job. Mm -hmm. We're uh, we're full. We're full of sin. And uh, our old flesh, it just, it's just me. It's, mm -hmm. it's simple. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's like a snake. Mm -hmm. You get a, a little baby snake, you raise it up, he'll bite you. Mm -hmm. He'll bite you. And this, this old flesh will bite you too. So thank you all so much for listening this morning. And I hope that something said. Uh,